from All Star Movies Resort. We are just checking out and we're about to leave. That's why I'm wearing sunglasses in the room. I don't just uh, walk around like this. And everything is now packed just about. I don't know how I managed to get everything into the suitcase. I've got way too much stuff. Some of it is drinks and things that I'll probably use while I'm here that I bought at Target. So hopefully by the time we go to go home, the suitcase is not gonna be horrendously overweight. But it's been really nice being here at All Star Movies. We really enjoyed the room. Obviously you have the two beds because you've got the pull down bed and this one and that works really well. One thing that we did just spot here, a lot of you have asked recently about mousekeeping and it does say here that during your stay um, you will receive full housekeeping service every other day. That actually hasn't happened, we definitely haven't had mousekeeping come every other day. They did come a couple of times to empty the trash and take that away. Things like the cups and the coffee, they didn't replace that, definitely not every other day. We ran out of cups and things. So I'm not sure what's going on with it. I know in the deluxe resorts they've taken it back to normal where you should get mousekeeping every day and and at the All Stars here it's saying every other day but that wasn't our experience so who knows it might be because it's phasing back in since the pandemic because of course during the pandemic they were trying to avoid coming into the rooms as much as possible so perhaps it's just kind of in transition and that is going to be the idea going forward who knows but I just wanted to mention that that wasn't actually our experience they didn't come and do the beds and do full housekeeping was, they didn't do change the bed once I think, did they, they literally they I'm not tried it, but they haven't yeah they replaced the bed anymore, I don't think it's not so. a big issue really because it's bad for the environment but yeah um i think they only actually came once and replenished the cups the cups and stuff yeah and they only give you like two or three so it would be good if they could give you enough coffee cups and stuff but anyway we just wanted to mention that because it's always good to let you know exactly what our real experience is of these things but now we're going to take our luggage um store it with bell services and then we're off to epcot this morning i don't know um hopefully we'll be able to get a guardian's return time at 1 p.m so i'll show you our experience of that because normally i book it in the morning not at the 1 p.m slot we're going to try and do soaring spaceship earth then we're going to head around the world showcase there's a couple of the festival of the arts booths that we want to go to to try some of the um snack and drink items there so let's get going it's checkout time they're probably going to be trying to get in here so we need to leave and um, we're bringing our own luggage to bell services to ask them to store it we did try to call them but i was just getting no answer and you could be there forever i had to leave the owner's locker outside the door which i don't really like doing so i'm gonna have to ask them to go and get it but there's no way we could have carried that it's super heavy and this makes sense why we couldn't get through this morning yeah it looks like cheerleading groups have just turned up and luggage services is completely rammed normally you can just walk right up to the desk so we're just gonna have to wait in this line to try and get our stuff sorted and held for a while it's very bright out here yeah we're just waiting for the Epcot bus and I just put out on Instagram asking for questions from you guys because today in the video I'm gonna do a kind of walking around the world showcase q and I love doing Q&A's but they're kind of normally just a sit down type thing. I thought it'd be really good to answer your questions while I'm actually here in the parks. I thought that'd be a fun thing to do. So if you asked a question over on Instagram, hopefully I will get round to it. We're going to wander the world showcase and then just do random stops and do a couple of the questions each time. So I thought that'd just be something a little bit different today. Us is here and it's just us this morning. <laughs> no one else waiting. So we're a bit excited. We decided to go on the app just to see if we could get a dining reservation for Epcot. And we managed to snag one for San Angel Inn which Catherine has never done. I'm really excited because I look like some food and look spicy food, so yeah. I've always wanted to do it. So we're going to do that and um, we're going to start in Canada this time. Controversial, I never normally start in Canada, but we started the other way last time. So we can make our way around and then finish in Mexico oh. and then come back to All Star Movies, grab our bags and head across to end the summer. So that'll be later tonight. So it's going to be a really, really nice day. I'm excited to answer all your questions. I'm going to go on my phone now and see which questions you guys have already been asking. And it is nice and quiet on the approach here. This is the good thing about getting to the parks mid-morning is that there's nobody else. The queue for security is non-existent and it's just very nice and relaxing. I love this park so much, I can't tell you. When I'm walking in in the morning, it always, always is my favourite. Well, that was interesting. I just went through security and for the very first time this trip, I didn't beep and have to get my bag searched. So I don't know what I've taken out of my bag. I'm trying to think now. The power bank's in there. The other stuff, the umbrella, it's all still there. It's a mystery, who knows? But anyway, and in my haste to check out this morning, I forgot to put on a magic band. So I've actually had to get the annual pass card out to scan this to get into the park. Don't have to do that very often. Hi, good morning. 
Awesome. Happy Thank you. Day. We were thinking about Spaceship Earth, but it looks like there's quite a long line, so we'll come back and do that later on. Right now, I think we need to get some caffeine. It's a bit later than normal, so we're feeling uh, feeling the need to wake up a little bit. It's super quiet here in Starbucks today, so we've got our drinks already. I have my coffee because, you know, I just need to wake up. I also got a Starbucks um, strawberry lemonade refresher. These are just so good. Catherine is obsessed with the pistachio cold brew, is it? I love it. I can't yeah. really find these in the UK. I yeah. do do cold brews, but they're just not the same. Yeah. And yesterday I did get my cold brew because there's no Starbucks in the resort and I can't drink after like three. I've got it and it literally... I'm she's like, so happy. Like, I'm not, honestly, she's just like so I excited. Every time I drink it. <laughs> and then um, Catherine got a breakfast muffin and I got my classic piece of lemon cake. This is probably the most boring thing that they have but I've been getting this when I've been here in Florida since 2002. So it just reminds me of my old trips. I love it, it is boring, but I like it. It's about to be 1 p.m. So I'm just ready here to do our boarding group, hopefully, the Guardians. So you just go to virtual queue on the My Disney Experience app. Make sure you're kind of ready when the time ticks over. So it's 12.59, I am hovering over. I thought I'd show you in real time what happens. So yeah, you click virtual queue, oh, there we go. Join virtual queue, and there we go. We are group 124. Oh, good one. Yeah. So you can do that exact same thing at 7 a.m. or you can do it at 1 p.m. because obviously sometimes you're not going to be in the park early. Don't ever do it at 7 a.m. if you're not planning on coming to the park till the afternoon because when we were here the other day, we clicked it dead on seven and we were getting called like really quite early in the morning. So yeah. If you want the afternoon, then definitely do at the 1pm. Okay, I'm going to answer a couple of these questions while I'm here in Connections Cafe. I'm not sure what's going on with this angle because I've got the camera balanced on my bag. So, excuse the angle. You guys have really delivered on these questions. I've got loads of them. So, I've had several questions about the weather. What is the weather like today? How is the weather? It is actually really, really warm. I've been here in January and February quite a few times. And this time last year, Kate and I were in like coats and jeans a lot of the days. Um, but it's actually really, really warm. It's been, let me just actually take a look what the temperature is while I'm right here. The camera just slipped there, I've just re-angled it. Uh, so the current temperature is 27 degrees right now. It is 1.30 p.m. and it's been like that most days. I'm looking for the rest of the trip. It's pretty hot, it will go down to like 21 in a couple of days time. So it can be changeable at this time of year. Always make sure you do bring stuff for cold weather, but at the moment it's really hot. Okay, Erin is asking your favorite attraction out of all Disney parks you've been to. Wow. Wow, that's a lot of attractions to choose from. P.S. Love your videos. Thank you, Erin. Oh my gosh. Um, in terms of favourite attraction, it has to be Haunted Mansion, and I've loved all of the versions of it that I've seen in the other parks. My actual favourite ride, because I feel like Haunted Mansion, I know it is a ride, but it's kind of slow moving. In terms of like ride rides, um, I love like Passage, it will always be my favourite, but I think it has to be Haunted Mansion. And someone's asking, what is the best Disney hotel to stay in? First time solo traveller to Disney World. So in terms of which hotel is best to stay in, it really depends on your budget. I would say any of the hotels at Disney World, if you're a solo traveler, the good thing about it, you just feel completely safe. All of the transportation is kind of included staying there, so it's easy to get around on the buses, even if you're by yourself. Um, if you're coming for the first time, I would probably say Pop Century. I love the theming there. The theming is so good, and it's just very, very Disney. You also have the Skyliner as well, so if it's your first one, I would probably go Pop Century. Angela is asking, what's the sizing like for Spirit jerseys? What would a size 16 be? So I reckon I normally wear like a size 16 to 18, and I wear a large, so I would say a large would be good. Becky normally wears a medium, I think, in the Spirit jersey. They are a bit of a weird fit, because they have baggy arms, so the arms always feel a little bit big. But yeah, I would say if you were like a size 12 to 14 I would go medium and if you're like a 16 to 18 I would go large and then kind of go up from there. Uh, someone here is asking do you book separate or do you book package holidays and what website do you book flights on? So I always book my flights directly with the airline either British Airways or Virgin Atlantic and I always just book that directly and I book it separately. I never ever book package holidays for multiple reasons. One of the reasons is because I have an annual pass for Disney so I never need to buy tickets as part of the package and um, so that is one reason that I don't do that. In terms of hotel bookings sometimes I'm staying on my Disney Vacation Club points so that I obviously just book directly with Disney Vacation Club but if I'm booking a hotel here at Disney I always book direct with Disney at Walt Disney Travel Company. Always always book directly with Disney I just find it so much easier 
when COVID happened and everything had to keep being changed, I found it so easy to deal with it, just call them, they were great on the phone and they just dealt with everything. Um, so personally for me, I always book it that way, or if I'm booking Universal, I tend to book through Travel Republic, that website is the one that I always use, but I will link Walt Disney Travel Company below for anyone in the UK and Ireland who are booking, that's who I always use. This person's asking February or November for weather, not sure when to go. I would say February and November can be quite similar, so you can get quite hot temperatures and it also can be quite cold if they have a little cold snap. So either one to be honest, I like both of those times of year. November you would have the food and wine festival going into Christmas and this time of year you would have festival of the arts. I would say November has more going on in terms of seasonal stuff so maybe November would be good in that respect. And I'll just answer one more while we're here. And Sophie is asking what are the crowds like? I actually don't think it's too bad compared to January last year 2022 when Kate and I were here it was absolutely rammed everywhere. It was so busy in the parks. I just remember us being like bewildered at times by how busy it was. I'm not finding that on this trip. Are you? Do you think it's not too bad? No, I don't think it's too bad. Yeah. 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 It's, it's busy, isn't it? But it's not busy, crazy. But not like it was in November. No. It was party. It's much more manageable. It's that. yeah. It's it's definitely um, there's not crazy crowds for um, like evenings and stuff. You always get crowds for fireworks and things like that. But when we were in the Magic Kingdom last night, it wasn't too bad at all, and the crowds were quite low. The wait times were quite low. So I would say um, crowd-wise, this is a really good time to come. So I've got loads more questions for the rest of the day. I just thought I'd start it out here. And I think we're gonna finish up these drinks and yeah, let's get going. Okay, we're just gonna nip into Creation Shop really quickly. I've seen a few people walking around with a 50th lounge fly bag that I absolutely love. So we're not gonna go around the whole store, but we're just gonna see if they have it. They don't have it, unfortunately. They do have a few lounge fly bags here, but they don't have that one. So I'm gonna have to keep a lookout for it elsewhere. But right now, I think we're gonna go into Club Cool. We meant to do it the other day and ran out of time. So I'm gonna head in there and do that now. Catherine's just spotted this. That is really, really cute. Yeah, it's not too big as well, like the other tumbles Travel the world, big. and then it's got like, it's um, yeah. And then nice work pack. Oh, that's cute. Also, we were just saying, these kids' size bottles, so these are for children, I'm pretty certain, but they are the right size for a lounge fly bag. If you're ever looking for a water bottle to fill up with ice, and then so that you've got something to drink water all day, you could actually get one of these little tiny ones. They're 22 .99. Oh, the mini one's cute. Oh, that would match your mini one. Yeah, I think I like the mini one the best. Club Cool is right next door to Creations Shop. And last time I was here, they had a line system because it was quite busy, and that had it actually work very well because they told you which one to go to now it's a little bit more you just kind of hover behind one of them and hopefully we can get in there in a second okay let's see what we have here so minute made joy apple lychee i think i need to try that that's the one from korea i only get a tiny little sip because i'm drinking <laughs> Nice. Is it nice? I like that one. Fruity? Mm -hmm. What flavour is it? But it's not too sweet. Um, apple lychee. Ooh. But you can definitely taste those lychee. That's a China one. So China, we've got smart sour plum flavour. It smells really bad. It does <laughs> Yeah. Horrible. Oh no. oh no. Oh, what's it taste like? Oh no, she's getting water. <laughs> is it really bad? I want to try it. It tastes like, if, if anyone's seen my Tokyo vlog, I drank some tea that tasted like bonfire smoke. Oh, is that what it tastes like? It tastes like, like that. Yeah. What the heck? I want to try it. I'm so curious. Sour plum. Yeah. <laughs> that was the side eye look there. It's like vinegar. Oh, so, so you got vinegar. I got like a, a smoky taste of it. It tastes like barbecue sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it tastes, tastes like, like um, that's what the smoke, the smoky taste. Yeah, I am not a fan of that at What's all. This thing I've Have you ever tried Beverly? Oh yeah, that's gross. Yeah. I might try it again actually. It's been like since 2018. Dominican Republic. This is um, sparkling sweet treat, tropical fruit. That one's nice. Nice. It's not too sweet. Oh, right, I'll try the Beverly. Oh, she's going in with the Beverly. Good I love I wonder if it's as bad as that. Oh no, it's run out. Oh, is it not working? Oh, it must be working. Okay, we managed to get some Beverly, so Catherine's gonna try it. I know what I think of it. <laughs> it tastes like cough medicine. I really don't it's, get it. It's really bad, isn't it? it? It's not even like a nice one. <laughs> it's got really bad aftertaste. It like it's keeps like going. <laughs> 
Does anyone? Please let me know in the comments below. Does, Does anyone, anyone like it? That? Yeah. Or do you add a mix to it or what? Does anyone enjoy it is what we need to know because it's no it's crazy. Okay we've just had a look and Spaceship Earth is five minutes to Spaceship Earth we go. Okay here we go we have a five minute wait something I always like to see on Spaceship Earth and this is my first time riding Spaceship Earth on this trip. Love this attraction so much and this is actually my first time riding Spaceship Earth on this trip. I think you know you haven't done it yet either have you? And Catherine's got the Bing Bong lounge fly on today. Love that bag so much. It does, so cute. I mean, if I have those kind of accidents, it's no wonder my face looks like that. I've got like a cyborg guy. <laughs> <laughs> what can they do for people with half a head? <laughs> I should mention as well, when you've exited Spaceship Earth just here, there are some benches. There's some over there and just over here. If you're ever looking to get out of the heat and you're in Future World, this is quite a nice place to come. So it's nice and cool in here and very chilled. Catherine's just having a go on this. Oh, I think I might have done this before, actually. You have, like, body parts floating around. Okay, I've just got you guys some 3D glasses. There you go. So you pick up body parts off the conveyor belt, basically, and drop them to kind of build up Dr. Bones, I think. I have done this before. I don't think I did it very good. It's the longest and strongest bone in the body. So tell me, if that's called a forearm, why are there only two of them? Oh. <laughs> Oh, right, I give up. oh she's she's giving up i've just spotted here annual pass holder magnet distribution so i'm gonna do this i have an annual pass i've got no idea what this is that i'm gonna get and i just got this little magnet how cute is that i was glad i was walking past at that moment because i didn't know that was something they were doing at the moment this guy has the right idea and when you're here during the festival of the arts they have a big mural it says here mural paint and brush distribution which is just over here to the left basically they give you a little pot of paint and a brush and a little section of a big mural for you to do and then at the end of the festival the whole thing has been basically painted by everyone it's like a paint by numbers and here is the mural and it's open daily till 5 p.m that you can do this and it's looking good so far you can see some people here filling out their little section. Oh, and right on cue, we've got a monorail. I love seeing the monorail go around at Epcot. And here we are in the Land Pavilion. It does look kind of busy in here, actually. I don't think the wait time for Soarin' is that high, but I do think a lot of people are coming in here to eat lunch. Okay, here we are at Soarin', and it's currently a 20 minute wait. That's surprising, it does seem very busy around here, so we're gonna trust it anyway 20 minutes of course I will let you guys know whether it actually is 20 minutes or not I was just waiting for Catherine there she was taking some photos and now it's gone down to 15 we love a 15 minute wait for Soren in the middle of the day yeah like for you would not need genie plus i don't think today obviously it'll be interesting to see what ratatouille is and frozen ride i would love to do ratatouille at some point because every time i go it's kind of high so maybe today might be the day so this was basically a walk on it was not 15 minutes we've just walked all the way onto the ride
Dunham Soarin', love that ride always, it is amazing. And now we're heading over to Test Track. Catherine's gonna ride it in single rider. I don't feel like doing it right now, so she's gonna take you guys on and film it. And then we're gonna go on Guardians because it should be time for our return then. And then we're heading off around the World Showcase. I'm really hungry now, I really want some food. So we're gonna start at Canada and see what we can get from the festival booths. There's definitely a couple of things I want that I've seen that are sweet, but I need some kind of lunch savory type thing. So we'll see what they've got. All right, Victoria's currently saying hello to some subscribers over there. I'm gonna go ride test track. I'll let you guys know how long I wait in single riders. So the standby entrance is currently a 60 minute wait and this one apparently is five to 10 minutes. So let's see how long it's gonna take. So you can either do your design station here. I'm just gonna walk straight by this because I just wanna get on the ride. So as you can see, we're right at the front. So it literally is a five minute wait and the standby queue is 60 minutes. So if you've rode this before or you're not bothered about being with a friend or family, single rider is worth doing. And just like that, we're on. It was literally five minutes. Hello, the seatbelt check is around the corner. For your safety, please see seatbelt fasten in your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. SIM card performance data acquired. Commencing SIM card off road in extreme weather sequence. The fun bit, are you ready? Time to test the power. you don't want to wait 60 minutes I definitely recommend single rider you literally queue for five minutes I remember before my brother went on it about five times in a row oh it's so loud right let's go find Victoria so we're just over here by Guardians I hope you can hear me over this very epic music that is going on behind me um, so we're just waiting for our return time it should be any minute according to the app and I just wanted to let you know how that works so we joined the virtual queue at 1 and it is now 10 to 4 so that's roughly the kind of amount of time you can expect from booking the return time and we booked it dead on one o'clock and you saw when we were here the other day when we booked it at 7 a.m we got onto it fairly early in the morning it wasn't too much of a wait I don't think was it, it was, yeah, no like maybe like I want to say it was like 10 or 10 30 or something so yeah it is good to get it in the morning if you are coming to the park all day but if it's in the afternoon obviously you're going to want to go for the one o'clock one so as soon as we've done this ride we're going to head into the world showcase I've already looked on the map and scoped out what I want to eat so at Pop Eats they have the grilled cheese and tomato soup which I did have before and I love so I want to get that and there's also a little mini mushroom risotto I'm going to try that as well then we're going to make our way all around and eventually end up in Mexico for our reservation at San Angelo, yeah, so which Catherine is buzzing for that. I'm very excited. And as we go around in each pavilion, like I was saying, I'm going to answer some more of your questions. Literally as soon as I switch the camera off there, it is now time. So it's just like one minute. Love this ride so much. I'm not going to vlog anything inside. I vlogged it for the, the other day. I can't really show the actual ride itself. So we will see you when we're done. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Oh, that was so good. Oh, we had a different song. Yeah, we had one. Way, you're <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was so good. And yeah, Catherine was loving it. I feel sick now. Yeah, I we're feeling sick. sick. <laughs> and I just wanted to let you guys know, and um, when you do the virtual line, it's not like a lightning lane. Just be aware of that. You're not going to get straight on the ride. So it's 45 minutes from scanning in 
to actually getting on the ride. So just be aware of that because I think sometimes people feel like virtual queue means that you will just get straight on, but you do still have to wait a little bit. Although that is the longest I've ever waited, I have to say. I have waited that long before, but I think have when you? you go right when you board in past, yeah. it's like cold. I think everyone does that, so that's why it's a long. Yeah, that's true. The other day, actually, we waited a little while and then we went on, and I think it was like 25 minutes. So perhaps going straight away isn't the way, right way to go. Maybe when it gets cold, you Five, can wait. Ten minutes. Yeah. A little bit, but it was amazing. We love it. We always come off that ride just like, it's awesome. amazing. So good. So we're just at one of the booths here. This is one that's by Test Track, and this is where I think it was the fry basket last time. So I had the um, fry flight, and they have something called Angry Crab. I would imagine all crabs are angry when they're getting eaten, do you think? So we've made it to the World Showcase. Just taking a couple of photos here. This is such a nice photo op with the rainbows. So this is our first stop, Hop Eats. You might remember this from when I was here last year. I am going to get a grilled cheese and tomato soup. I think they've got a special grilled cheese that has fried green tomato in it. So I'm going to try and get that up. Okay, so here we have the tomato soup and this is the pimento cheese, bacon and fried green tomato grilled cheese. This looks really, really good. I feel like this is bigger than last time I had it. It's a decent part. It is, yeah. The soup last time came in this really cute little tin can thingy. This time they've got a plastic one, which is not quite so cute, mm. but it smells amazing. It looks amazing and frankly, I am so hungry, I'm just going to get into this right now. Mm. Nice. Is it sweet? Tiny bit. It's more just like, it's just a really good tomato soup. This sandwich is like a really big amount for a kind it's of fest big, festival. Yeah, a big half of a sandwich. The tomato and the bacon in there, that looks Ooh, yummy. Really smells so good. I'm going to dip it. This is torture. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you get one? Oh, I can't have that. Oh, that looks good. Mm. Nice? Mm. Good. So good. So now we're going for Deco Delights and I'm getting the orange mousse, which I will admit, part of the reason I'm getting it is just because of how good it looks. Who knows how it's going to taste? Let's see. Here is the orange mousse. Like I was saying, it does look very cute. Actually reminds me of Sully, the purple and the blue on the mousse in the middle. So let's give this a try and see if it tastes as good as it looks. I like that. It's not too orangey, it's just a, like a slight hint of kind of citrus taste. And it's very creamy. I like that a lot better than the key lime pie that I had last time. And this is Gourmet Landscapes, and this is the other thing I'm gonna get. I'm just gonna get the wild mushroom risotto, which sounds really, really nice, or risotto. Risotto. <laughs> we pronounce it very differently. You can also get bone marrow. That is definitely not for me. I do not That's like the sound thing. of that. Yeah, I don't. Mm. I'm curious. I want to try it. Oh my gosh, that looks kind of crazy. On the actual bone. So <laughs> Catherine has got bone that. marrow, which is an actual Sorry, an actual bone. bone. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. With mushrooms and whatever these are. Little leafy guys. Yeah. Then I have the mushroom risotto, which looks so good. I love the look of that brown sauce. Whatever's going on there. So let's give this a try. Okay. Now I will say, if anybody watches my other channel, Victoria in Detail, which I will link below, if anybody wants to see my everyday non-Disney channel. Channel. I make mushroom risotto a lot at home. It is one of the things I eat the most. So I was interested to see whether this one is better or worse than mine that I make. So here we go. It is good. I would say, if I'm being completely honest, it's about as good as mine. I would say mine is mine is like this. Very similar. Very delicious. Really, really good. If you like um, vegetarian food at the festivals, which I do, this is really, really nice. I've actually concluded I prefer the food at Flower and Garden, probably is my top one. Then this festival is the second. And weirdly, the food and wine, which you would think, given the name, would be the best one. That's my least favourite for the food. I find the food a little too adventurous for me at food oh, and wine like festival. It. Someone like Catherine who eats, like, you really like to try oh, different things and spicy food and stuff. Um, it would be really good. But for me, I find this festival and the Flower Garden Festival is the best. Okay, Catherine seems slightly unhappy with her, um, her bone. It's just a bone with marmalade on it and some mushrooms on top and it was $10.50. Oh, okay. Yeah, that that's not it. that's not a lot of food. It for... was just marmalade on top. I don't, like, I can't scoop out the inside. No. So what is the... Because my grilled cheese was $6.50, I want to so say. I basically paid ten fifty for some marmalade on toast. Okay, that's not great. That is, no, would not recommend. So in terms of value, we're saying Rubbish. no to that. Not a vibe. Not a vibe. <laughs> okay, that risotto was absolutely amazing. Can highly recommend that. 
I'm gonna do a few more questions while I'm here. There is some noise around. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. And you guys have asked so many questions. I'm gonna try my best. Um, oh, there's a duck right down here by my feet. That scared me then. Clarabella is saying, the Florida heat, is it worse than the heat wave we had in the UK last year? It's kind of weird because when we get a heat wave in the UK and we did get quite a major one, when you're in your house in the UK with no air conditioning, it's just horrible. When you're here in Florida, they adjust obviously air conditioning and stuff depending on the weather. So I actually don't find it as bad when it's out here. Do you find the same? I'm the same because it's set up so you've got your pools, you've got your air con. I was out in the van yeah heat wave and it's brutal but here everything's set up for the weather yeah and it's not too bad at the moment it's like it's, it's very hot for january and february so in conclusion i would say depending on the time of year when you're in florida it's not as bad but if you come to florida in the summer when it's like hot 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 that is crazy but actually at the moment we've had 30 degrees nearly on this trip haven't we it's been so hot yeah i like the heat though so it depends if you're a heat type person if it's set up with air con hills it depends if you like the heat. yeah i think the, the bottom line is it feels different when you're out here in Florida because you have air conditioning, you have the pool as well if you want to. When you're stuck at home in the UK with no air conditioning, it's not good. Uh, so this is an interesting question. Someone's saying out of all your Disney World trips, what was your favorite and can I please link it? So it's really difficult to pick a favorite in terms of the experience of the trip. I love all of my trips. In terms of the vlogs, actually, I think my favorite vlog series was when I went with Kate in 2019. So I will link that below. For some reason, I just love that vlog series so I will link that for you. Um, Faye Bell is asking best time of year to visit Disneyland Paris. I'm really not sure because I've only ever been twice and I've been at the end of January when it was absolutely freezing, literally freezing. Um, I would imagine it would be really nice to go in spring. Maybe someone else in the comments, um, comment below when is a good time to visit Disneyland Paris because I've only been when it's been very, very cold. Someone is asking here what are your thoughts on Disneyland Paris? I absolutely loved it when we went on the trip that we just did with the 30th celebrations. It wasn't quite as cold as the time before i think when we went in 2019 it was so cold it actually spoiled it a little bit it wasn't that cold this time so we were able to enjoy everything the nighttime shows and the parades i will say at disneyland paris are something else it is worth going for the parades and nighttime shows alone and with the 30th celebrations they have at the moment the decorations are so good as well um so yeah and like the music in the parades and nighttime shows is just awesome and now they have the avengers drone show the power of the night drone show just amazing uh, this is a good one. Claire is asking, do you have to own DVC to have an owner's locker or could it just be used if you visit a lot? You don't have to be a DVC member. Owner's locker is actually a separate company. Um, so it's nothing to do with DVC and you can definitely have one if you just visit Orlando a lot. It's a box basically for you to keep your vacation stuff in and then it stays here in a warehouse in Orlando. They pick it up and deliver it to your resort, but it means that you don't have to bring all of your stuff every time. I keep a lot of ears in there. I keep lounge fly bags. I've got a kettle that I keep in there. Uh, stuff that I only need when I'm out here in Florida. So we're gonna move on to the next pavilion and I'll answer a few more when we get to the UK. And the sun is starting to set. Look at Canada here. It looks absolutely stunning. I always say this for Epcot at this time of night. So let me just tell you what time it is. 20 to 6, obviously that is in February. The skies just look beautiful. And we're now here in the UK. Again, look at the sky over this castle. That looks so, so pretty. Okay, look at this mug. It is like really, really tall and skinny. It's like a super skinny mug. Thinking about it, I don't think they keep the chocolate in here anymore to guess the price. I think it's in the other um, store. Oh, that's interesting. Look at the top. Massive. I've not seen a lot of it. It's like an interesting lid. Yeah. 1999. See, that's better value than the Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Look at this lounge fly. Oh my gosh. I'm assuming this is a lounge fly bag. It doesn't actually say lounge fly on it. Oh, it does. It's at the side. That's really cool. So we're now here in the UK. I'm going to do a couple more questions. And we just noticed in this window, Mary Poppins' dress is behind us. I've never noticed that before. You notice different things every single time you come to Disney. So let's do a couple more of these. Um, is it really bad weather in August, Melissa is asking. Um, yes and no. So you get a lot of rain. So you might find you get rain showers and stuff. Also, it is very, very hot. 
some people like that so if you're looking for like hot summer weather it is quite humid as well it wouldn't be for me it would be my idea of worst nightmare weather hot humid and rain so i personally avoid it um having said that my friend came in august and went for the last two weeks of august and she said although it was very hot they didn't have a lot of rain and it wasn't too bad so it depends really on your weather tolerance i guess and second question would you recommend the all-star hotels yes definitely i've had really good experience at all of them i've stayed at all three of them now and actually the last two trips that i've done and especially this one the bus service has been great we haven't waited um even when we're leaving the parks at a busy time we've not had to wait very long at all and um, the rooms are really nice now that they've all been refurbished so yes i definitely would recommend them and they're usually very good value if you're looking for a more budget option can we just take a moment to appreciate how france looks from this bridge You've got the pink cherry blossoms there that looks absolutely stunning it's so funny we're just stood here taking photos and everyone is losing their mind as they're walking past these pink blossoms with the sunset I'm just gone Catherine who obviously is an artist and really into photography and aesthetics she's yeah she's just yeah she's just she is just shot. having her moment here in Epcot. Like, what an amazing day to be in Epcot. Yeah. I love all the cute little details around Epcot as well. Just looking over the bridge here, you can see the little bike and the painting. So we're over here in France and looking at the food booth, they have a creamy brie and house-made bread bowl, a croissant, which is black tr winter truffle, plant-based Napoleon with beets, cashew herb filling, pepper pine nut sauce, that is vegan. And they also have a molten chocolate and hazelnut cake. I'm too full now, I need to save myself for our dinner in Mexico, but that does sound good. Okay, we're now over in the France Pavilion and the sunset behind me, it's hard to tell on camera, it's so amazing. So I'm going to answer a couple more of your questions. So we have, um, Hey Disney Teacher is asking, how does it work transferring resorts? Love your vlogs, thank you. So transferring resorts is really, really easy if you're within Disney. So this morning, for example, we packed up our room, took our luggage to Bell Services, or if you have too much stuff for you to manage, they can come and collect it you just call them from the phone in your room they will then take it and store it at the resort you can go off and do whatever you're doing for the day if you are moving to a different place like we are to universal we will go back and pick up our luggage and then get an uber across to universal but if you are staying at another disney resort so you're just doing a split stay disney will actually transfer your luggage so you just say to them i'm moving to i don't know port orleans riverside wherever it is and they will send your luggage there and you can pick it up from the bell services at that resort when you arrive so disney make it very very easy to do that just don't forget when you get your luggage delivered to your room or anything like that to tip the bell services people when they uh, bring your bags i'll answer one more while i'm here in france are you planning on going to hong kong disney or tokyo anytime soon i would love to go back to tokyo i've only done it once and i just have one day in each park it's actually quite convenient for me because my brother lives over in asia so it's a good time when i go and visit him i'm not sure if it's going to be this year looking at the trips that i have planned but perhaps next year and i would love to go to hong kong and shanghai i'd love to do all of the disney resorts at some point fingers crossed and just to let you guys know the ratatouille attraction remy's ratatouille adventure i think it's called is 45 minutes that's actually not very high yeah that's really good so it's obviously not that busy the last couple of days in the parks and over here between france and morocco they have vibrant and vivido i think that's how you say it chorizo and potato empanada spicy soup and passion fruit mousse so you're getting something there yeah spicy soup oh nice okay okay we are over in morocco just having a little sit down here i just got myself a water because i realized hardly had any today and catherine has her soup so this was the spicy soup it's got a whole corn on the cob in there and some guacamole which is interested in soup like this yeah it doesn't look that appetizing some sour cream and then chunks of chicken this is a massive portion for soup yeah that is pretty good actually mm, Mm, it's very spicy. Is it super spicy? Mm. <laughs> I did wonder because sometimes um, things are not that spicy because they're kind of catering to generally everyone's taste. But oh, okay, it's quite no, spicy. This got a nice, and I like spicy food. It's got a nice pick to it. Okay. So if you like spicy food, this is definitely it. But I feel like it could have had more flavouring from other seasonings rather than I feel like I'm getting a lot of cayenne pepper in my face. But yeah. It's delicious nice okay this lighting is pretty horrible but i'm just gonna go with it to do a few more questions while we're here in morocco so lasagna queen love that username by the way asks will you be going to universal yes we will so we're leaving here this evening going over to endless summer which is one of the universal hotels and staying there for five nights and we'll be going to the universal parks then real rose says how busy is it and um, what shall i pack clothes wise coming in two weeks love your vlogs thank you so in terms of busyness there isn't really a slow season at disney world anymore 
to be honest. Um, it always used to be that this time of year was quite quiet and September was quite quiet, but now I feel like most of the year is busy. However, this is definitely not as busy as it was in January 2022, and the wait times for the rides are lower, I would say, so it's not too bad. It does depend on the day. When you're in the parks on a weekend, it can be worse. Um, some parks can be worse than others at certain times, but like here at Epcot today, it's totally manageable. The wait times are manageable. It's easy walking around. There's a lot of people here, but it's not too bad. In terms of clothing, I would just say bring warm weather clothes, like what you would normally bring to Florida, but definitely bring a couple of jackets, maybe sweatshirts, cardigans, that type of thing. Um, and maybe like one or two pairs of like leggings or trousers, just in case you do get a cold snap, because that can happen at any point in February. I would say once you start getting into like March, April, it is unlikely it's gonna be cold, but it can still be chilly in the mornings and the evenings, especially at this time of year. El Dodd says, what are your top three must-do restaurants at Disney World? Okay. Ohana is one of my favourites, I spoke about that in yesterday's vlog. It is kind of pricey though and it's getting more expensive all the time just because it's getting more popular, but it is still one of my favourites I have to say. Um, I also really like sci-fi dine-in because of the atmosphere in there and I would actually say quite possibly San Angel Inn where we're going this evening, but also Tapanedo, that's four. Am I allowed four? I'm going to have four. Oh, someone underneath, that's my top five. That means I can add another one, right? Because someone asked what are my top three, someone asked what are my top five. So, Ohana, Sci-Fi Dining, San Angel Inn, Tepanedo, and probably, what is my other fave? I would have said Trails End, you know, but that's changed, it's closing down. It is actually closing and going away entirely, just in case you didn't know that. Uh, probably California Grill, actually. I haven't, I don't go there all that often because it's expensive, but it's a great celebration restaurant and food's always been amazing there. Uh, someone's asking Disney California or Orlando question mark. I'm assuming you're asking which is my favourite out of those two um, rather than which one you should go to. I, I guess you mean which is my favourite. Definitely Disney World here in Orlando. Um, it will always be my favourite. I've been here so many times. I love Epcot. I love Animal Kingdom. Don't get me wrong though. I loved California. I love to go to D23 and I definitely want to go back to California to have more time in the parks because it was a very different experience, a very special experience and I loved it. One more while we're here in Morocco, Joffrey's or Starbucks? Starbucks, I actually at one point might have not been sure on that but definitely I do prefer Starbucks. They just, I like the coffee better, just the, their actual blend that they use. I love the blonde roast that they have. I love the um, strawberry and dragon fruit lemonade refreshers. They just have so much stuff that I like. So we're just going to head back here with the eternal hope that there might be some merchandise i don't think there is but every time i come here i have to just have a look but i think this is probably still going to be a bar back here as you can see there's not many people back here because they just don't have the merchandise and stuff to look at at the moment yeah so this is still a sangria bar by the look of it back here it's very awesome back here like the decor is very good and it's cool to come back here and just have a sit down but it was nice when they actually had this as like a indoor market type thing I would definitely recommend this pavilion the most though for coming to sit down if you need to. So there's lots of little tables just dotted around like this, little benches and stuff and because there isn't a lot going on back here, not many people are back here so it's nice and relaxing. This restaurant is currently closed, Restaurant Marrakesh. Okay we're here in Japan, we're going to take a quick look in Mitsukoshi department store and actually I did notice weirdly on the app this morning when I was looking for a reservation, there was one available for Takumi Te, which is this restaurant back here but it's still looks closed but it was going to let me book a reservation i'm very confused i'm not sure what's going on there but at the moment like the podium's covered up and stuff so yeah strange i don't know whether it's open or not Catherine's excited because her um illustrations and stuff are very kind of kawaii anime inspired, anime inspired yeah. yeah i used to watch a lot of anime still do yeah um, and a lot of my art and stuff is very heavily inspired by japanese pop culture so, so you love it in here yeah, yeah. I, so this type of thing definitely gives me vibes of Catherine's catnip items. Oh my gosh. Tom Crook, don't you mean? Oh, you all he sneaky. all he ever does is take everyone's money. I haven't played Animal Crossing for the longest time. I played it constantly during lockdown. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's oh, super cute. Cat. It's like the Mario Kart one. Yeah. Oh, it's Kirby. Oh, they've got lots of Kirby items actually. That bag is very cute. That's so that's oh my god, it's seventy dollars. Is it? Yeah. Ouchies. That's, that's expensive. So cute, but I'm not paying seventy dollars. But look, how cute <gasps> look what else they have. What? Kirby oh, bucket hat. I love a 
bucket hat. Catherine is a bucket hat fan. I do, I like bucket hats. Everyone like ditch it, this is it. I'm not. Like, I mean, see your bucket hat first, I'm not. But very cute. That is cute, actually. As bucket hats go, that is. Um, if I had the proper dress on, if I had a plain dress on, I'd have yeah. <laughs> I think you could totally pull that off. That is cute. It's so cute, isn't it? It looks nice as a decor piece on like. Deciding you get cake, it's yeah. Catherine's out of control in here. <laughs> he is very cute. He's very round. See, right. The bag was 80. Oh, I forgot already. Yeah. This is 35. Yeah, that seems like. That is cute. And look at the little bear. He's got like a little lemon like hat on. There's actually a Netflix uh, 3D animation of this. Aww. <laughs> Look at the ice cream cone penguin. <laughs> oh, the stuff in here is too it's cute. Amazing, isn't it? Gouda Chama, lazy yeah. egg. Lazy egg. His his butt always looks funny if you turn it around. <laughs> Yeah, he needs to do some squats. Yeah. I did not know that. Catherine was just saying these Japanese books you read backwards. Yeah, that's how you read it. Mm. Like and, uh, manga is always from the back. These are beautiful. These are Studio Ghibli. Look at that. It's like an art form in itself. <laughs> I'd have this just as a coffee table book, and it's in full Japanese, which is really nice. But this is the artwork of the Studio Ghibli film. Love it. But yeah, all books are read from back to front. Ah, I did not know that. Oh, look at this one little guy on his own. Aww. He looks a little bit sad. Someone needs to buy him. I love these bags where the little hands have Velcro and they can cover up their eyes. And that it also seals the flap to the bag. Yeah. It's a really cool design. And like this one. Yeah. It has magnets on. That's such a good idea. I bet they're about a million pounds. Oh, 60. 60. Yeah. I mean, that's not when you think about how much a lounge fly is. Oh, there he is again. They used to have more stuff from this range, I feel like. Oh, they've got him there working out. If he's the lazy egg, why is he working out? Is he's that working out lazily because he's laying down? Oh, I see. He's like doing like little side <laughs> like, leg lifts. Yeah, he's like pretending to work out. You know, when you get dressed with the intention, then fall asleep and stay. Oh, I see. I'm with you now. I was like, he's not lazy if he's working out. Look at this clock. This is really, really interesting. Oh, it's a small world. Oh wow, look at that. Oh, it says it makes castle. sounds. Do you think it plays the small world music? Can you press it? I think you can press it. It says try me. Hang on, I can press this one. Oh. Go marching. That's cute. Oh my god, that would be such a nice £300. I mean, it is $300, to be fair. I think that would be a really nice deck copy so you keep... Yeah. What button's this one though? Like, this one looks really nice. But where's the button? Is it... I don't know, I'm scared to touch oh, it. No. And this store is looking pretty well stocked compared to last time. If you remember, like during Covid, I think they did have some supply chain issues and some of this was a little bit bare. They still have my little green tea set that I really love. But again, I don't have room to bring it back. One day I will get this, I love it so much. Oh, the glow from my phone is giving me a creepy glowing yeah. face. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do some more questions. We're here in Japan, and actually this is good because we need a little leg break. We're feeling the burn slightly now yeah, with them. Um, it's always the case when you're walking around Epcot, it is a long old walk around the World Showcase. Hopefully this lighting is okay though, in all seriousness, because I've got light behind me. It's night time now, so I can make no guarantees with lighting. So Matty is asking any news on whether the castle will be changing colors again after the 50th celebrations have finished. I actually don't know, in terms of them repainting the actual castle itself and like the decorations on it, I don't know what their plan is. I would imagine they will take a lot of the, what do you call them, like the flourishes. Yeah, the, the extra like, bits, like the 50th badge. And yeah, the and the gold yeah. kind of whirly things. We were, we were saying though in the past that it'd be really cool if this kept some sort of projection on the yeah. because of how good it is. The nighttime like colours that they have on it, I hope they keep that. Maybe it can be different colours, but I hope they keep that. Um, but I don't know if they're planning on doing another makeover. I would imagine they'll just remove anything that's specific, like I say, the badge and the, the flourishy things, but maybe the colours will stay the same because it's obviously quite a big undertaking redecorating the castle. Favourite hotel, I've answered this one before, Polynesian, it's got to be for me. There are so many that are up there and are very, very close to being my favourite but I think overall Polynesian would be my favourite. How about you? What's yours? Um, I 
haven't had the grace of sailing those nice ones, but I'd say Pop Century or oh, Coronado Springs. Oh, Coronado's, Coronado's good. Yeah, I'd really love nice. to stay at Grand Destino Tower. I would love that. Danicha is asking, be our guest or Cinderella's Royal Table for a birthday dinner. I love your videos. Thank you. I would say for a birthday dinner, if you can stretch to it, I would go Cinderella's Royal Table. I think that's a little bit more special. And and um, just more, yeah, it's in the castle. So yeah. if it's a birthday, I would say Cinderella's Royal Table is extra special. A favorite ride in each park. Okay, here we go. So Magic Kingdom, Haunted Mansion, Epcot, Guardians of the Galaxy, Hollywood Studios, oh my gosh, it's good, Toy Story Mania. I love what Toy Story Mania. Resistance? I know, I do love Rise of the Resistance, but Toy Story Mania, I, mm. It is fun, that one. If I had to choose, push comes to shove, I'm going to say Toy Story Mania, but Rise of the Resistance is virtually right there with it. And which one haven't I done yet? Animal Kingdom would be Flight of Passage, yeah. definitely, without question. Favourite park, Epcot. Always, always, always. Favourite snack, I this changes for me. Usually I say a Dole Whip is my favourite. Oh, we've gone dark. Very, very dark. Oh, there we go. Usually I would say a Dole Whip is my favourite. But sometimes, no, it's a Dole Whip is my, is my ultimate favourite, I would say. Okay, let's do one more while we're here in, in um, Japan. Will I ride Tron? Yes, 100% definitely. A few other people asked, am I riding Tron this trip? Unfortunately not, it's not open yet. It doesn't open officially until April, and um, I will be here in May. So definitely in May I'll be able to ride it, but on this trip um, it's not open yet, so sadly not. But 100% when it opens, I will be riding it for sure. It looks incredible. The cast members have been riding it. Yes, well. yeah, I have heard from the few people who have ridden it already and posted on social media they've said it's amazing and it does look great and i don't think you're going to be able to tell from the camera but spaceship earth is going all kinds of different colors we've got rainbow at the moment it's really really beautiful but i don't think you're really going to be able to see very well okay we're just over in the america pavilion you can hear the broadway show going on behind me look at these shorts i think these are like pj shorts they're really nice <laughs> 36.99 and this is where you can come back here to see the voices of liberty i don't know how often they perform i'm not sure if they even do perform in the evenings yeah it actually doesn't say when they're performing next but this room is incredible this is where they do normally perform and you also have the american adventure back there which is a show that you can go and see i thought i'd come in here to do my couple of questions in the american pavilion because the concert outside is very loud in the whole pavilion <laughs> you probably hear it in here actually so gary is asking where do you buy your mouse ears from so a lot of them are from Disney the ones I'm wearing today are my DVC ones the red sequin ones I wear all the time the black leather look ones with the pearls on a lot of you guys ask about those they are all Disney ones but I also love ears from magic maker ears and um, they sell on Etsy I will link them below and I do have a discount code as well and also ears ever after which is an online store I'll link them also next question is should Disney make a UK theme park I don't know, I don't think I would like it. I know that sounds weird because I'm in the UK, but I just, I feel like I want to go somewhere to feel like I'm kind of going on a trip. So like Paris, coming here, going to California. I don't know how I would feel about a UK one. Plus we just don't get the weather. Like even when it's not raining in the UK, it's just gray so much of the time. And I feel like, I don't know. I don't know. For me personally, I would say I would rather they didn't. I'd rather they made one somewhere else if they were going to. Next question is, do you ever get lonely or feel weird solo traveling at Disney? I really don't. Of all the places you can possibly do solo travel, I find Disney to be one of the best places you can go. So often when I'm here by myself, I talk to people when I'm standing in line, when I'm waiting for parades or shows. The cast members are always really chatty. Quite often if I'm eating solo at Disney World, I'll eat at the bar in certain restaurants you can sit at the bar rather than at a table and then talk to the cast members who are behind the bar and there's just so much going on all the time in the parks I really don't ever feel lonely when I'm traveling here and I think perhaps there might be the Voices of Liberty coming out soon because people are starting to gather I'm actually going to move on because Catherine's watching a little bit of the Broadway show while I just came in here and we need to make our way around because we do have our dining reservation later and we want to make our way all the way around because Mexico is our last stop I just thought I'd tell 
Ellie, as I was walking out then, someone asked the cast member, the last show for Voices of Liberty is at 7.30. So we've just arrived in Italy, and this little bit that we said the other day, we did not know was here. I don't remember this very cute little, yeah, and it's lit up now as well, this little courtyard. We're gonna head into this store, just see if they've got anything new. This is the store where they always have the lemon stuff. Yes, here we go. If you're looking for a lemon outfit moment, and the lemon ears as well. Oh, I actually quite like the, the apron. So it has like um, the Mickey head kind of design. That's cute. I do love the pizza ears. I'm always kind of tempted. They're a little bit niche. Like I think I would only wear them if I was it's going. It's like subtle nods of pizza though. They look yeah. floral from far. They actually do look floral Florida. from far back. And then when you look, it's like jalapeno. And I do love pizza. <laughs> they would be good to wear if I you're going to be in Napoli. Ass. They are really cute. Oh, on the back you can tell the pizza. Do you reckon I'd get away with it when I go on my Italy road trip? Yeah, that, <laughs> I think you, sh like you should. You definitely should. I do love they have an ornament as well. So they have this ornament, which is the building that Via Napoli is in, down at the end. And then you have Mickey and Minnie inside there. That's actually very cute. It is 29.99 though. That is a pricey Christmas ornament. I just love as well how all of the pavilions are different at night. They just have a different kind of feel to them. Oh, I smell pizza. Mmm, that actually smells really good. Oh, the donkey. Right, I knew I wasn't oh going mad. Now he's not yeah, he looked really sad the other day without his cart. That is weird. I wonder why he was just stood around the flowers the other day. He's happy now anyway. Okay, time for another couple of questions. And the lighting is just getting more and more bizarre by the minute because it is now nighttime in the World Showcase. But hopefully you guys can see me okay. So next question is, did you already spot cast members with pin lanyards again? So I did see this online the other day. With the pandemic, the cast members stopped doing pin trading because obviously um, it was like no contact and they didn't want people getting too close and I believe they now are going to be pin trading. I haven't actually noticed any cast members with a lanyard but I haven't been looking so from now on I will keep an eye out and see if I notice them. And Alice asks, is there an attraction or snack you wish you could bring back? Actually, yes there is and only people who have been going to Disney World for a long time are going to know what I'm talking about here. So at Pinocchio Village House in the Magic Kingdom, the one that's right next to Small World, they used to have a snack that was called Figaro Fries so it was fries with cheese sauce, bacon, ranch and tomatoes and lettuce on top. It was the best snack ever and they got rid of it after a few years. Probably in around, I want to say like 2007 or something they got rid of it. I wish they would bring those back because I absolutely loved them. And we're just on the approach into Germany. One thing I wish they would bring back in this pavilion is the little teddy bear store on the right hand side i'm fairly certain it's still closed but let's have a look i used to love it in there i do love how this pavilion looks it really is awesome i think it might be reopened or is this maybe this is part of it is reopened because it was actually this store that had the teddy bears but this bit i think was closed last time and now is reopened so this part definitely was closed last time and we can see here they've got a wall up here so this used to go into the second part of the store which had the teddy bears that bit's closed <laughs> Yeah, they're cute, aren't they? They're kind of expensive because they're a special, I think they're Bauble, Bauble something is the brand. They're very, very nice though. Yeah, what's going on here? What is it? It appears to be oh snow. Oh it's a really cute snow white, but what is this though? Oh! What is it though? Is it just a Is it a berry or a... I think it's the poison apple. Oh, it's a poison apple they're inside. inside. Okay. That's a bizarre, like... Yeah, that's kind of strange. Oh, his face is actually really cute. He's like, hello, look how soft I am. It's all fluffy and I'm gonna die. He's like, take me home, take me home. Oh my god. Oh, the penguin's cute. Oh, I'm so happy there's a teddy bear shop again. Basically, the reason I love these teddy bears so much, they're so soft. Look at this guy. <laughs> I'm not sure about his tentacles. They creep me out a little bit. They're very soft. So Stife Bears are the brand of bear. They are, oh, I yeah, see. So they're like, the first teddy, it's like, their first, first version. Oh, that's, that's very nice. cute. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Stife, and then it's an official. Yeah, it's like a special. That must be a special German teddy bear that they do. And they have a turtle. Is he a turtle or a tortoise? He's a tur turtle. How, do you, how can you tell the difference? Well, he looks to me like he's about ready to swim. And this hedgehog looks like he's been for a salon day. He is looking very spiffy. 
They're, yeah, that's, this one's my favourite. If you're craving some Haribo, you can come into this store. They are $4.45, however, but you know, if you're desperate. I can recommend the sour spaghetti. I really like that. I haven't tried it. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so question time here in Germany. I'm just gonna do maybe one question in each pavilion because we are getting close to needing to be over in Mexico. So Gabby is asking, are Lightning Lane reservations just as scarce as when they first released Genie Plus? I would say no. On this trip, when you look online to see what's available for Lightning Lanes and on the regular Genie Plus, I would say you can get availability a lot better. Some things are still very difficult. Slinky Dog Dash is always difficult to get and some of the others, but I'm noticing it's not as bad because at first we were noticing if you didn't get online straight away, like everything was gone. And on this trip, I would say, not that we've done Genie Plus, but I have been looking and you can pick up reservations a bit easier than before. And I just wanted to show you this view. We're just over, about to walk into China and you see the whole of the World Showcase here and it just shows how big it is it really is quite massive like over there in the distance is Canada and it just looks so far away I'm looking very bright pink here in China Ray is asking any good nighttime entertainment for adults at Disney World so great places to go in terms of bars you've got Trader Sam's over at the Polynesian Resort I would highly recommend that that is absolutely great it's such good fun over at Disney Springs you've got quite a lot of options for bars that open a bit later also I really really love Jelly Rolls over at the Boardwalk it's a dueling piano bar and it's such good fun I think they do have a cover charge there but it's totally worth it you do have to get there early to get a table if you want to be there for the evening but it's one of the most fun evenings that I have had at Disney World so yeah those would be some of my recommendations and it's very quiet back here in China so like we were saying it's really not a super busy day here in Epcot you can see just going back here towards going into the bit where the film is. Just very, very chilled. So even if when you're walking through kind of the main bit of the World Showcase, if you actually come into the pavilions, it's not too bad at all. Okay, I'm now over here in the Norway pavilion and time for another question. So Natalie asks, how did you start your Disney journey? So I started my Disney journey in terms of like coming to the parks 20 years ago or 21 years ago now actually. I'd always loved Disney movies growing up, like Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, those kind of golden years of Disney movies I always loved but I didn't start traveling to the parks until I was 19 it was my first experience in 2002 and I didn't even come to the Disney parks that much I actually spent more time in Universal yeah I went to Magic Kingdom on that trip and Hollywood Studios maybe I did Epcot too but only like one day in each park then I came back again the next time and it just snowballed from there I absolutely loved the parks and then I started the channel in 2015 I think and from there I've just been coming more and more and more I love it more than ever and that's been my journey with it really I know I do have the channel and everything but ultimately I am just a Disney mega fan I am a mega fan of the parks I love coming out here everything about it here we are at the Mexico pavilion for our dining reservation and as we're walking up we can actually smell the Grand Fiesta tour the water ride if you guys have ever noticed and before you even get inside the pavilion you can just smell that water smell I love it so much is it just me or does it feel brighter in here than normal I feel like the lights are up there's more because it's nighttime outside. Oh, maybe. And we normally come in here during the day. Yeah, I feel like it's brighter, but that no, could. Probably isn't. Yeah, you could be right, actually. Oh, no. We've just checked in for our reservation. We were going to ride the Grand Fiesta tour, but it's closed. Something's clearly happened. That's not good. I've actually never noticed these decorations outside, these kind of tree things. It looks like a corn cob, doesn't it? With, <laughs> yeah, it does a bit. But I don't think I've ever spotted those before, unless they're new. Okay, we're here at the fountain in the Mexico Pavilion, just waiting for our table, and I thought this would be a good chance to do the final question. I was going to actually do the question on the Grand Fiesta tour. I thought that would have been cool, but we were thwarted. It's closed. So I thought this was a good question, actually. Um, Tana is asking, is the Disney transport from park to park easy to navigate for first timers? So we talked a lot about the transportation from your Disney hotel to the parks but sometimes you're going to be wanting to go from park to park and in some cases it's easy and in some cases not so much so if you're going from Hollywood Studios for example to Epcot that's very easy because you've got the Skyliner right there outside Hollywood Studios so that's easy you've also got the boats there as well if you're going from somewhere like Magic Kingdom or Animal Kingdom that is less obvious I would say so when you look at the board as you come out the park it tells you all of the different bus stops to go to the different hotels if they have a bus that is going to another park it will be listed there and it will tell you which bus stop to go to what the heck? I'm so sorry 
they just popped up out of the top of a building. That was very random. Yeah, if you're at somewhere like Magic Kingdom or Animal Kingdom, you'll just need to look at the bus board. If there doesn't appear to be a bus going from the park you're in to the park that you want, it might be that there's a different mode of transportation. So for example, at the Magic Kingdom, if you want to go to Epcot, you would get the monorail across and you would need to get the monorail from the Magic Kingdom to the Ticket and Transportation Center. And that's where you transfer across to the one for Epcot. So it's maybe not 100% obvious all the time. It's a good thing to do your research. Actually, now that you've asked this question, now in my head, I'm thinking, should I make a video about transportation around Disney? Yeah, how to get here, how to get there, how to get from park to park. If you would like me to do that, please say yes in the comments, do a transportation video. Also give the video a thumbs up. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this wandering, walking Q&A. I just thought it was something a little bit different. I thought of it this morning when I was getting ready. And if you did enjoy it, please do let me know that in the comments and give it a thumbs up. Maybe I could make it a thing every trip. I could do a wandering Q&A around the World Showcase. We could make it a new tradition if you guys have enjoyed it on one of my videos to do a little Q&A. But this has actually been really fun to answer your questions while I'm here in the park. And I know you guys always want to know everything about the detail of your planning. So that's exactly what I'm here for. And what my videos are for is to let you guys know how to do things. And I always want to know what you guys want to know. So these Q&As are really good for that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And and we are definitely excited for our dinner now, yeah, aren't we, at San Angelim? Looking forward to it. We've requested a water table. You often do have to wait a little bit longer, but it's well worth it. Although we're not going to see anyone going by on the Grand oh, Fiesta yeah. tour. It might be back up by then, you never know. So just to let you know that thing that Catherine was suddenly like, what on earth is happening? The top of that building, something popped up. It was like an animal, like a duck with, but it wasn't like Donald or anything. Oh, I thought it was- a rock and then a laser shooter. Like a laser gun? Yeah. It was so, so weird. weird. I actually thought it was a monkey, but I- It might be a monkey. Monkeys, oh, yeah. monkeys are my favorite animal, so I might have just been seeing a monkey, but if it pops up again while we're sat here, we will definitely show you. We just missed it, but something just popped up out of this window now. Yeah, so noises that happen and then if you look around you see that i've never noticed that before this is what i love about disney i've been here 26 times and i notice new little details every single time i come here there it is it is it is a monkey isn't it it's a monkey with a laser that looks like a sombrero yeah I can't believe I've never noticed that. Unless it's new. I'm like in a world of my own. I always stare at everything. That's how I noticed. That's so funny. I love all of these little animals. They're so awesome. Look at this one, which I think is like, I don't know, it kind of looks like a cross between a grasshopper and a dragonfly. Mm. I'm not sure. He's got little pincer thingies going on. $150. Yeah, they're, they are kind of pricey. And our table is ready already. So that was very quick. We're hoping we've got a water table. It's not guaranteed. It is just a request, but let's go see where they're going to seat us. So we just sat here in the waiting area for our table and I just saw a shooting star behind the pyramid. I have never, ever noticed that before. We have got ourselves an absolutely beautiful water table here. I have sat at this exact same table when I was here on a solo trip so uh, yeah I've sat at this one before it really is amazing and the menu here is on a QR code so I'm gonna have to zoom in it's really not coming up very clearly I don't know whether that's the signal really. I opened the PDF it was better it oh, says, how if you scroll it says open in PDF oh that's yeah, what view PDF, yeah, it's way better. and just to show you the rest of the restaurant while I'm waiting for the menu to load it really does have such a great atmosphere here okay the food has arrived I ended up going for the soup I usually get the enchiladas but I wasn't really hungry enough for the enchiladas, they're quite filling. So I've gone for this soup, which I've had before. It's really delicious. It's got tortilla strips in, it's got guacamole in there, really, really good. And it's quite a peppery flavor, I would say, but really, really nice. We also have some chips and queso here, which is really good. And there's also salsa. And Catherine has ribeye tacos, I think Ribeye tacos with sweet plantain, and this looks like salsa verde or Ooh, something. Oh, nice. Um, so yeah, but I've asked for hot sauce because I want it even hotter. Because you need everything just spicy. super spicy. Yeah, the food is always really good. And these tortilla chips, but they just taste really, really amazing with this cheese queso dip. Okay, we're all done with our dinner and Harmonious is happening right now. We are gonna try and exit before everybody leaves for the buses. Hopefully we can get out before this is done. <laughs>
and it looks like there's DVC membership magic tonight which is special evenings they have for DVC members normally I would have signed us up for that I didn't actually know it was happening on this trip I wasn't paying attention so if there is anything like that we're not going to it but I have done them before and they're really good okay here we are at endless summer dockside I it looks very fancy I think last time I stayed on Surfside I'm almost certain it's kind of the same hotel but there's two different sides as the name would suggest my suitcase is so heavy I am barely even able to pull it and it's quite late now so we're gonna go and check in we are feeling tired and this looks very nice there's a Starbucks over there we're gonna come down here in the morning we've both got some work to do so we're gonna have a coffee working morning and then off to Universal in the afternoon so we've just arrived into our room here on the left we have a little wardrobe space just got like a little curtain over and into the main part of the room we have a unit here this has a fridge inside and actually um, it's leaking there is water on the floor so we're gonna have to call them in a second just to ask what we should do about that I don't know whether they'll move us or come and fix it or whatnot there's a TV up there and um, just like a little getting ready area you could use this as a desk nice little chair in the corner then we have two beds and there's like a little I love how that looks like a travel chest the bedside table in the middle and some nice beachy artwork this room is actually very big it feels very like tall ceilings very airy very very large very room modern, really nice decor I was saying it feels like the same standard but it's cheaper than a budget Disney hotel it feels more like a moderate resort. yeah it's really nice yeah it's really really nice and our view is pretty amazing big big window going out onto the pool and we're on the ninth floor so we're up nice and high and then I'll just show you the bathroom which doesn't really have like a door on this bit so you've got your sink area towels and all that kind of stuff there then the bathroom just is your kind of standard shower over the tub and the toilet there but again it's quite nice and big it doesn't feel pokey or small and that's just as you come in there's like a little kind of I don't know what this would be called it's quite a big area anyway for you to put luggage or whatever you want in there so oh and there's the controls for the air conditioning and what have you so really really nice room but we will just phone about the fridge and see what they say about that yeah. part of me is tempted to just wipe up that water and leave it but then if we get all our stuff unpacked that would be annoying so Ooh, I feel like I'm looking a bit um, bedraggled at this point let's say in the evening it's very late now I think it's like 11 p.m. or something we're getting here quite late they've just come and fixed the fridge actually it wasn't broken what happened housekeeping had switched it off when there was like an ice compartment in the top and it had leaked so luckily he's just cleaned it up plugged it back in it's all good and we're just making ourselves a little decaf coffee <laughs> to have while we watch a little bit of YouTube the TVs here at Universal you can watch YouTube and stuff on they're like smart TVs which is really good and then we're going to get to bed get some sleep so I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and like I was saying earlier if you enjoyed the Q&A aspect please do let me know because that's something I could potentially do again it was actually quite fun doing that as we were going around today as always a huge thank you for watching these vlogs a huge thank you to everyone who came up and said hello today I met so many of you and I love having a little chat with you all about your trips and just meeting you it's really great to put faces to the names when you comment on the vlogs and everything um, it was really really nice and I hope you're all well I hope you're having a great day don't forget to subscribe I've got lots more Disney vlogs coming up every Saturday and if you tap the bell icon it will always let you know when a vlog has been uploaded so I'll see you all in the next one which will be a universal vlog bye <laughs> Thank you.